If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. If you're a long-time subscriber, always good to have you back. Today, we're going to go over how I carry 115 gallons of water in my Winnebago Micro Mini 2306 BHS. But if you haven't seen my video about the 100 plus modifications I've done to my RV, you're going to want to check that out first. So if you know anything about what I do with my camper, I do exclusive boondocking or winter camping when most campsites are closed and that's why I need a lot of water. So winter camping in Chicago, Wisconsin, the Midwest is snowing and most of the places that are open all year round don't actually have water. Now let's go through how many tanks I have. The stock tank that comes with the Micro Mini is 31 gallons. Then I added two 39 gallon tanks, bringing the total to 109 gallons of water. Now when you add in the six gallons of the water tank, that's 115 gallons. Now not everywhere I go actually has a faucet close enough to reach the RV. So I also carry two six gallon collapsible water totes, if you will, that I can fill at a gas station bathroom, wherever I want, and then I can actually fill the tank. So let me show you that before we jump into how I added these tanks. So here is the collapsible water container. It nicely folds up when you're not using it, and then it just pops right open when you fill it up with about six gallons of water. So I have two of these on board, bringing me to a grand total of 127 gallons of water if I need it. The great thing about the positioning of my fresh water fill is it is right below my kitchen window. So I fill these up, I put it on my kitchen window, and with a simple gravity <laughs> siphon, I can just put the hose through the window and straight into the tank, and it makes filling a breeze. Now, one thing I tried to do, but I was building this in the middle of the COVID pandemic, and when RV sales were going through the roof, they still are, I tried to order the stock fresh water tanks from Winnebago, but I couldn't get anyone to sell me one because there were shortages. So I went on to recpro.com where I found two water tanks that would fit my needs. So basically I found a water tank that is 27 and a half inches wide, 53 and a half inches long and six inches deep, which fits perfectly. And it might be a little bit too big, right in the frame in, uh, in amongst my channels of my micro mini. Now, do your measurements first because the Micro Mini is a narrow trailer compared to your standard eight foot wide trailer. So you could fit these ones in if you have an eight foot wide trailer or you could even get bigger. Now the main question I've gotten is how did I actually hook these up? So for that, I'm gonna quickly show you how they are mounted down below from some previous footage, some footage now, and then I'm gonna jump into my office and show you some drawings on the computer. But let's check under the RV. All right, guys, so here is a quick drawing before I jump into the actual footage of what I have underneath the RV. That way you can refer back to this when I'm going through the video. There will be a link uh, in the description below to download this just for your reference. So this top section here is just the top view of the RV. Obviously not to scale, but this is the stock 31 gallon tank. This is uh, the 39 gallon tank and the second 39 gallon tank. This one is shorter and this is a lot of room where I have all the connections. If I found a shorter tank, it probably would have been better because it is a tight squeeze in here. But anyways, this is from the side angle if we were looking this way at the tanks. So the water fill is uh, on the side of the RV, which I pointed out. We have the yellow, which is where you actually fill it and the red, which is the overflow that um, when these tanks are full, it squirts out of the top there. And let's go over how it does it. So basically, when we fill in the water here, it uh, gravity feeds, it fills up this tank. When this pipe is full, it moves on and it fills up this tank. And when this pipe is full, it moves on and it fills up this tank. And then there's back pressure in all of these, and then it will start overflowing. Now, I recommend you do individual um, overflow pipes because this pipe is not straight like this. It's kind of wavy and air bubbles get in here and it doesn't let the water escape. So it prematurely, this one will fill and, and squirt out the hole instead of this one. So what I do is I fill it up as much as I can 
Then when water shoots out of here, I wait five, 10 minutes, and then all the bubbles have passed, and then I can uh, actually put in another 20 gallons or so. So that's the one change I would recommend. Now, when it comes to emptying the water, you guys will see this in the footage later, my valve system in the actual RV, but each tank can be drained individually. I always drain the front tank first, removing tongue weight from my actual car. So how that works is the, the, the pipe goes from the first tank all the way to a valve. I will open this valve and here is the water pump. It will suck water from just this tank. It will never drain water. There's no way it can drain water from these other two tanks. That also helped me once when um, my winterization pressure valve popped open on an off-road trip and I forgot my pump was on and it actually pumped out one 40 gallon water tank uh, out the back of the RV, which I'm glad I had this system working. I had these two closed, but I did lose 40 gallons of water. So you do want to separate the tanks. So when this tank is empty, I'll shut this valve, I'll open this one, and then it'll only pull from this tank. And likewise, move on to here. And then I've just replaced this pump with a bigger pump, a uh, normal pump is three gallons per minute. This is a 5.5 gallons per minute because it is self-priming. So it has to create a suction long enough to prime and suck the water from here. So I figured a bigger tank could have a bigger self-priming function. Anyways, and then I just hooked this up to the standard RV uh, uh, connection that comes stock. And this goes to the kitchen, the toilets, the outdoor shower, the shower, and so on. So that is... Um, how my water tank system works. Anyways, enjoy the rest of the footage and if you have questions, leave them in the comments below. Let's jump right into walking around underneath or should I say rolling around. <sighs> Alright, so it's gonna be pretty odd filming this. So the reason I removed all of this is because I added two tanks. I added this tank and this tank. That is the stock tank. So the, the under carriage cover comes right up to here on all of your stock micro mini 2306. I don't know where it stops on the other ones. So this is all exposed to the elements. Uh, this front portion, which I'm actually going to seal up now, but the insulation stops here. And then this is all an empty spot. I just put a tank here. This is the standard tank that comes here. I've heard that Winnebago makes their own tanks. I couldn't find these exact tanks. Luckily, I found these ones that, you know, fit by the skin of my teeth. Um, but these actually hang from the top. And I wanted that because I didn't want these below, but you know, these actually worked out and they, I believe they give the, the frame more stability. These are pretty heavy duty. Uh, these are, what's it called? Uh, fence post mounts that go into the ground. So they're galvanized and they won't rust, but this will give the frame more stability when I'm off-roading. So on the, the new, the, the earlier 2021s, there were no tank heaters. On the new 2021s, there are tank heaters. Uh, these tank heaters are set to go off automatically below 45 degrees or turn on, and they turn off at 68 degrees. I'm boondocking. I don't want these just to turn on automatically, so I've installed a master switch uh, to make sure they just don't turn on automatically. So right in here, uh, I added this. This is from the furnace. I added this this pipe right here. Let's see if you can see it. Um, and then I put a cap on and I just drilled two holes. This furnace doesn't have too much of a, a fan. So I didn't want this completely open. Otherwise, most of the other vents I added won't push hot air. So this is just to heat up this area in here. Um, the tanks are heated. I just put these in here because hopefully it will prevent the pipes from freezing up. I don't know if it'll work or if it won't because it only is in this compartment. My goal is to drain the first tank, obviously, then the second tank, then the third tank will be 
uh, obviously the last tank to drain that way the tongue gets heavier I don't plan on traveling with that one full if I'm 10 15 miles from my destination I want to find somewhere to fill that I do carry a 30 gallon bladder in my truck so I can go find my boondocking spot with these two full and I can leave and go fill up uh, that one with my bladder in my truck so anyways here is the furnace pipe that I have put in here just to heat up all these connections this goes straight into where the kitchen is this is also where I ran my extra wires uh, or extra pipes for the tanks so the tanks are all filled by the same um, pipe so what happens is this one will fill first this one will fill second and that one will fill third in a perfect scenario it, it, it works somewhat like that so here's where the water comes down from the fill this is the closest access but some water will make it this way but it does work where uh this one fills first this one and then that one and then i've joined the backflow all together so when they all fill then i'll squared out the the fill area there now i have didn't i didn't hook up the drains uh together they are all separate that way inside i have a valve system i can select to drain the front tank uh the middle tank and then the rear tank all at different times so that's what i will do that's why i'll always start with draining the front one first um i don't know if i like this drain here obviously it's going to make winterization easier but uh it hangs out loose and if it snaps off um, when I hit something or you know a twig or a branch then I'll lose my all my water so I think I'm just gonna replace it with just the, the regular cork like this one has which is removed now alrighty now that you've seen that video you can see I have added an additional two water tanks one right in front of the stock one and then one a bit further forward on top of that, since I winter camp, I needed to install water heaters on all of my tanks, including my black and gray. So I did that while I had the installation removed from the bottom. Now, everything is filled from this one hole. And how I've done that is basically, I've just let gravity work for me. Once the first tank is full, it overflows into the second tank. Once the second tank is full, it overflows into the third tank. That way I can fill all the weight closer to the axles and move on the way to the tongue as it fills up. Now you're thinking, I should be overweight when I'm towing. One of the main reasons I bought this specific trailer is I have 2,500 pounds of payload capacity, but also I don't always travel with three tanks full. 99% of the time I only travel with the two tanks full. And how do I know when they fill? I installed a separate gauge meter right in here that monitors the two front tanks. Now, what I've also done inside is that I installed a valve system. It works for now. I want to make it a bit better, but I'll show you that shortly and I can choose which tank to drain from. That helps me also drain from the front tank first, moving on back. Now, there's a couple things I've learned while doing this is if you have an RV, you know there is an overflow valve. When you fill the tank up, it gets all the way filled, it will squirt water out somewhere saying, hey, the tank is filled. I've connected all three of these to one line, but since it's not a straight pipe, some air bubbles get caught in there. So I cannot fill all three of my water tanks without giving it, uh, let's say a five, 10 minute breather to let all that air come out. So one thing I would change is install individual breather hull or breather pipes for each tank. That way I can fill it up much quicker. Now, another question I get asked is, how do you have all that water and you not fill up your gray tank? I kept my gray tank as it is, which is uh, 41 gallons. So yes, that is an issue. But what I have also done is I've installed a macerating pumps on my gray and black tank, meaning I can actually find a dump easier than I can find fresh water. Because I can dump this out into a toilet, I can dump it out into a porta potty, or I can dump it into a state park, one of those long drops, because it just, uh, I can actually pump about 30 feet away and uphill. So I can find, as crazy as it sounds, 
a gray and a black dump much easier than I can find fresh water when it is negative temperature outside. Anyways, let's jump into the inside so I can show you my valve system so we can wrap this video up so you can get installing some extra tanks on your RV. Alrighty guys, so here's my kitchen window I was talking about. I just leave the six gallon water tote on the sink here and it will siphon into the tanks. But let's go over the valve system I have here. So one thing I did do is I increased the pump. The standard pump that came with this RV was a three gallons per minute. I increased it to a 5.5 gallon per minute because these are self priming pumps. Now the front, the middle tank and the stock tank are all different distances away from the, from the actual pump. And I figured I needed a stronger pump to self prime the further away tanks. But here is my system. Obviously, I have no water in here, but I, the last tank I used was the stock tank. So I've installed, this is a stock tank valve, the, the middle tank, and then the front tank. So what I'll do is when I fill up water, I will drain from the front tank first. Simply, it just sucks from the front tank now. Now, when that tank run, runs out, perfect, no problem. Just shut this valve and open up the middle valve. Again, draining from the middle tank and so on. And then I'm draining from the stock tank. Now, when I'm draining, draining from the stock tank, I know I need to start looking for water. I've also obviously kept the winterizing uh, pipe right here. So that is not a problem. But that is the simple way I have managed the system. Ideally, I should close this up and actually have the valves out here. But I was in a rush when I did this and this worked just fine. So there you have it guys. That's how I have over 115 gallons of fresh water hard mounted into my RV with an additional 12 gallons to fill those tanks. Or if I know I'm going to be away from a water source, I can fill those six gallon tanks up and just bring them back to the camper. So guys, make sure you like, follow, subscribe, leave a comment below with any questions and keep in mind, I'm doing a giveaway from now until the end of the year. Link in the description below on how you can win over $4,000 of tools. But guys, make sure you check in every now and then because I'm going to do a whole bunch of videos about how I've made this the ultimate boondocking off-roading camper trailer. From a macerating black and gray tanks to increased insulation on the bottom to floodlights all around to security cameras. You know I've done everything to this. So thanks a lot for tuning in, but until next time, I'll see you then.